Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. Melanie Bidimo, Michelle Patton, and the girls today got some really great things. Check out their videos on uh, DATV.org. I think they come in on Mondays, and what's the other day, Michelle? Wednesdays? Mondays and Wednesdays, yeah. Mondays yes. and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Okay, they got some really great programs on there. Melanie, tell us where we're going today. I understand that some people today are biting, or should I say buying, mm -hmm. but they've bit these apple, you want to call it, what kind of life about that, because they have got a Bible today that's not a King James, but to hear them tell it, we had a lady tell us the other day, oh, I just pray, and God tells me what it means. <clears throat> now, if I understand you right, we as Christians have a covenant that's based upon our Bible and obedience to the Bible, mm -hmm. and we believe that the King James Bible and the Strong's Bible Concordance is the closest way to the truth. Amen. What if, and I'm asking you hypothetically, but it's happening every day. What if you have a Bible that is supposed to be a Bible, but it's really not a Bible, and what if you want to join yourself to Jesus through the Bible? Is it possible? You're joining yourself to another Jesus, so to say. It might have the name of Jesus, but if it's another Bible, then it's another Jesus. Oh, okay. Give us a little idea, Melanie. Tell us where we're going today. I understand there's many people out there that don't even know. I had a lady tell me the other day, I never heard the blood covenant till y'all talked about it. Mm -hmm. Tell us where we're going today because I realize there's false prophets against you against Michelle, against me, and they're against every little person out there listening to us today. Well, praise God. Um, our duty is to read the word, cast out devils, heal the sick, preach the gospel, and um, whoever wants to go with us and receive it, more power to you, some may say. We're going to be in Matthew 26, open up with this scripture where Jesus was taking, um, so to say, communion with his disciples. And he had told them to take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. And I like it because it's relevant, because as we are in covenant with Jesus Christ, it says that we ourselves take communion in remembrance of Jesus Christ, of his blood, and also his body, which was the bread, which was broke. And in stating that, you can find these words in Matthew 26, 28, where Jesus had specifically said, this is my blood of the New Testament. And you can find out right here, just by that alone, it shows you that that's how we get in covenant with Jesus Christ. And this shows us as an illustration, you can find even in Hebrews 9 and go back to the Old Testament to see that there were blessings, so to say, and a curse that people had enjoined into with when they got into covenant, so to say. And in breaking this covenant with Jesus, the consequences still stand true and sure. But I think that understanding what a covenant consists of and knowing all the blessings and benefits that come with it and knowing that there is things we have to do in order to stay in this covenant is very crucial and critical and important too. As we stated that there's other Bibles out there intentionally to deceive people and get them out of the true covenant, with, which is with Jesus Christ. And we're going to show you some more information about those liars, deceivers, false teachers that are coming in with damnable heresies. And I'll let Pastor go ahead and speak on some more things and tell you where we're going to go. Okay, are you talking, Melanie, about Second Peter? Let's give them an example. Chapter 2, verse 1. He said, but there were false prophets among the people in those days, even as there shall be false teachers among you, and who will privily bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So they bring in these damnable heresies. Give mm -hmm. us an idea, Michelle, and tell us what a damnable heresy is. A damnable heresy is something that is a doctrine or anything, a teaching that is totally opposite of our Bible and something that is, would pervert the truth. Like, for an example, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, 
where Paul had says, though any man or any angel come with another gospel than what we preach, let him be accursed from Christ. Then he goes and says again, he says, which is not another gospel, but a, they have perverted the gospel of Christ. And so this is the damnable heresies that they're talking about. I know if you look up this word heresies, it says 139 in the Greek, if you use a strong concordance. And it talks about a disunion. Mm -hmm. In other words, which is, uh, I think it's the Greek. It, it talks about a sect of people. Let's mm -hmm. say it this way. We know the people that's doing this today. They still hate Jesus Christ. You can look at the ideal of Jesus Christ being accepted today. And it's very bad. I think if you look at it, you're going to find out there's a large sect of people that are preaching the gospel, posing as preachers, but at the end of the day, they are against everything we stand for, and they've got two things in mind. One of them is perverting the people's minds. Mm -hmm. The next one is gaining their money. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, and as we're talking about this Second Peter, what's kind of relevant and noteworthy as we talked about this Privily shall bring in damnable heresies. That privily means surreptitiously, which is kept in secret. Because if people knew about it, they would disapprove. It would not accept it for the slightest moment. And this is important at being aware and knowing what's going on because they're doing it secretly. They're doing it without notice, so to say. And they're doing it in a way that's conniving, um... What's the other word we Seductive. use? Seductive. Seductive. Su sucking people in. Yes. I was thinking of the word stealthily. Yeah. Do you remember we use that word? Well, stealth is right, too. A stealth bomber. Yes, you know, sir. They come in like that. But basically, they want to just suck people in. They mm -hmm. sound like they use these big fancy names, yes. making you think, oh, yes, this is a great man. Mm -hmm. But really, really, at the end of the day, Jesus said that that's the opposite. You want to talk about a great person? Mm -hmm. Find him washing the saints' feet. Yes, sir. Find him into the garbage can. Yes, sir. Find him loving the saints. Mm -hmm. him, find him bowing down. These mm -hmm. people like Joyce Meyer, she's got all these hundreds of millions of dollars, and she does these things all over the world mm -hmm. in these mm -hmm. prisons, she mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. How come, Michelle, you can't find her name on one, one, I say one, food bank in America? Because I believe it's all a lie and it's all false. Okay, what about the women's shelters that's pregnant and starving? Can you find her supporting one of them? No. And wow. You'll find here in Second Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, is talking about the very same thing that you're talking about. It says, many shall fall their pernicious ways. And that word pernicious is damnable, damnable and destructive ways. And it goes on to say, by the reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So with covetousness, they use these feigned words to make merchandise of you, and to take your money, to scam you, not only to... Um, destroy your soul, but to take everything you have. Yep. Okay, Melanie, mm -hmm. can I ask you one question? I yes. know you've got something there. But in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, mm -hmm. it talks about r these guys that are so evil, they have forgot the Lord that bought them. Mm -hmm. Are you telling me these guys were one-time believers in Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. They had been bought? Yes, sir. Well, how do they get this idea here, once saved, always saved? Where did that come from? Well, I believe that it's a doctrine that has been set forth by these false teachers. And, um, and even as we used, I'm not trying to get off topic, but even Judas Iscariot, you know, if people say that once saved, always saved, we, we always say, what about Judas? They say, well, he was never saved. And we say this. Look back in Luke 9, you could look back before Judas had committed suicide. He was part of the 12 that Jesus Christ had called and gave them power to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the leopards, heal, heal the, the sick. Wait a second. If he was part of that 12, how come he was never saved? You have to be having the Holy Ghost in order to do something like that. Okay, most of them look at it like this, Melanie. He was never born again. True, he never was. None of them were. Okay. But they received the Spirit. They had the Spirit. You know, uh, according to this, I think Jesus said, receive you the Spirit. Okay. 
I mean, how far does it go? You look like the Spirit of God was up on the prophets of the Old Testament. Yes, sir. But the idea of it, you're right. He was one of them as much as any of the rest of them at one point. He gave them all power in Matthew yes, 10 and Luke 10. Yes. So, you know, it's kind of what it was. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> let's ask the question. These uh -huh. people that have brought this swift destruction upon themselves probably. Mm -hmm. I think it's talking about the last days. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 15 and 16 is very important. Uh -huh. I think people have looked at this. I've heard many people speak about this. I've never heard anybody tell the truth about it because really they don't know what they're talking about. Uh -huh. In Second Peter 2, 15, tell us what it says. Which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. It even drove him to the point where he was mad. He was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb donkey, even speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. What is this divination that he talked about in Numbers 22? Mm -hmm. In verses, I think it is 7. seven. And it talks about the rewards of divination. Was that money? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, what is it in verse 17 where it talks about they, when money didn't do it, mm -hmm. they wanted to promote him to great honor. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that relates to us today because we're talking about the last days here. Well, these people that preachers, suppose so-called preachers, want to be lifted up to great honor and want to be these famous preachers. And they want to be lifted up as they're somebody great. And they're basically become mad like Balaam was. So they are actually idiots. Yes. But they're smart in some ways. Mm -hmm. They're crafty. It's like, what is it, Jeremiah 4.22, they're wise to do evil. Yes. But at the end of the day, little do they know that they're destroying their self. Amen. And that word, when they used in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 3, where they use feigned words, that word feigned is talking about false, fictitious, something that's molded. And they use these feigned words to deceive people. Yep, and the words is the logos. So they artificially use the word of God to deceive people. Does that make sense? So they mold, they take some scriptures. We've even heard many people talk about Ezekiel 28, which is another topic. But they'll take some scriptures, but mold it to make it say what they want it to say. And that's what they do. They falsely use the word of God. Okay, we know the time is running out today. I wish our time was longer but let's talk about this just a little bit, about people that are crazy enough to believe that Jesus rose the dead. I mean, he raised Lazarus from the dead, right? I mean, he helped the little people. He said he has never come to minister to the rich, even though the rich can be saved, but they're far and few in between. And he goes on to say that not only uh, did he help the poor people, but he loved them. And that was the whole thing about it. He didn't go along with the money agenda. Right. Is that still going to be the days that we're living in, Michelle, the same thing? Is that why they hate us? Yes, that's exactly why they hate us. I find that's really sad that everything you see today is against the poor people. Mm -hmm. We find the health care bill, it's all against the poor. Mm -hmm. We find the charge cards of 29%, they're all against the poor. Who else uses them? Mm -hmm. We find the pharmaceutical companies that run the health care bill, they want to sell you more pills. You know, they don't want to help you to get healed. Anyway, my name is Pastor and I hope you've enjoyed our program, got something out of it today. I think we're living in the last days, and everyone should take heed to those things, hearing and seeing the miracles that Jesus did in the Scriptures, and apply yourself to following in his footsteps, who is the God of all faith. And I believe if you use your faith today, you'll be a great person. Faith is actually what God used to create the heavens and the earth. And it will keep you in much victory. I'm Pastor Inman. You can write to me at 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You can even call us at 937-235-0246. Or you can email me at Pastor Inman, I-N-M-A-N, at att.net. Thank you and have a great day.